Uh, we are live, sir. Okay, great. Namaste, everyone. Today, I, Veena Dhingra, on the behalf of ABG Abdul Kalam Council of National uh, Young Scientists and All India Educators Forum, welcome you all to the Lecture 11 of 75 at the rate lecture series under Amrit Bharat Ganit Mohatsav 2022. It is our privilege to have a mentor, maths mentor, a passionate educator and yoga guru and researcher in high-speed maths, Dr. Vishal Bhatia with us as today's resource person. Let's give him a big applaud. We are thankful. Uh, and I also extend my humble welcome to our mentor, leader, and motivator, Dr. Chandra Mali Joshi, sir, for always encouraging us and enlightening our path to serve the society and the edu education fraternity in focus. For everyone who is new to this platform, I would like to tell you about Amrit Bharat Ganit Mahatsav at the rate 75 lecture series. This program was envisioned with the motto of making math an easy, interesting, and enjoyable subject. And with this 11th lecture of the series, we are slowly but consistently moving towards our goal. I would also like to take this opportunity to pay gratitude to all who walked along us in the journey. I would especially thank Dr. Joshi, who is founder chairman of all WITMIT clubs under registered parent club, Raman Science and Technology Foundation and he keeps keep enthusing us with the new energy and motivation in everything we do. I would also like to thank Matthew, sir, the founder of All India Educators Forum, who taught me the technical aspects of conducting webinars or presentations. Under these worthy mentors, we are striding towards excellence with a mission to reach education to the most needful. Last but not the least, I welcome all the state and national Directors are WIPNET clubs spread over in almost all states of India and all maths educators and students. Now with this brief note of introduction, I would request you all to join us. Uh, and uh, I uh, request formally, uh, I request Mr. Paramjit Singh sir from uh, Chandigarh, who is director of NCMA, that is National Children Maths Academy, and he is a CBSC awardee, state awardee, and a math uh, physics teacher at government school in Chandigarh. To formally welcome our guest, uh, that is resource person, Mr. Vishal Bhatia, and introduce him with the brief introduction. Paramjit sir, please. Thank you very much, ma'am. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir, very much visible. So this is a great opportunity for me. A respected Dr. Chan Muli Joshi sir and respected Dina ma'am and all dignitaries present here on behalf of Abdul Kalam National Council of Young Scientists India and All India Educators Forum as well as on behalf of NCMA, Chandigarh and Punjab chapter. This is a great opportunity for me to welcome such a great personality uh, who, who has a flavor of our India in his teachings, in his styles, and all these things. Uh, with a uh, little biography, still I can I can feel the energy of our uh, today's guest and our mentor, uh, Dr. Vishal Bhatia. So I formally welcome you, sir, and thanks a lot giving us an opportunity to learn new ideas from you, so that we can take these ideas to our students also. So the topic is detoxing your brain through yoga and Ayurveda and tips to make maths a super easy subject. So this is a great topic. So normally, uh, as I have talked with Dr. Vishal Bhatia, normally we detoxify our body, but we don't know how to detoxify our brain. So this is very important. And sir said uh, one word that is chitta. So uh, this, this concept leads to clean the chitta. So once you clean the chitta, I think many goals we can achieve. So whatever hard work our council is uh, doing since last many years, if we follow this path, 
of detoxing your brain. Really, I request our worthy uh, chairman, Dr. Chandni, to think over this and plan new strategy to implement the mathematics. So, Dr. Vishal Bhatia uh, is, is a scholar from the London School of Economics, MS in Finance, BA Economics, Sri Ram College of Commerce. This college itself a uh, recognition. And recipient of four international scholarship and uh, guided Barkha Dutta of NDTV in to win the Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship. A strong interest in research into high speed mass and indefinite integral calculus. Other interest areas are quizzing, night photography, eyewear, detox, detox yoga through yoga, and research into flowers and plants which enhance memory. And uh, finally, math mentor, researcher into speed math, math focus on using yoga and Ayurveda to increase brain function. So going through this very small, I think this is looking very brief biography, but I can feel what is the strength behind this biography. If, if one know about the spiritual aspects of our development and uh, how we can see a multi-talented personality we have today. Why? Because he has clean chitta. Once you clean your chitta and purify your mind, uh, many aspects emerge in your personality. Uh, this is very simple. I think Sir has given very simple introduction to us. If we uh, deal with Sir, interact with Sir, we will know many dimensions are, uh, will be there. I am, I am very sure that many dimensions will be there. So I again welcome and uh, feel very proud to introduce such a great personality in our program. Uh, thank you very much, sir. You are once again, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Veena ma'am and uh, Paramjeet Singh, sir. Uh, and a warm welcome to all the participants. I see two familiar faces over here. One is my botany teacher from class 9 and class 10, Gori Rakshit. She's uh, joined in from Bhuvaneshwar. She's the principal of a school over there. Excellent in drawings. I still remember very fondly. So welcome, Gori ma'am. And I also see my front door neighbor, uh, Dr. Dinkar Sahel, who's an international celebratory uh, malaria scientist. And I happened to teach his daughter almost about two, three years back you know, uh, Kriya, which actually detoxifies the colon and in process enhances the mind functions. So I'll just uh, give you a brief about my background. I did a master's in finance from the London School of Economics. This degree is actually a very big misnomer. Um, you know, they taught us more maths, they taught us less finance. And uh, most of us had a fantastic background in mathematics. There were some very bright French and German students in my class. And I still remember a girl called Kattinger Dumotorfi who had run several full marathons and she had a packed schedule, but uh, she was from Wharton School, uh, University of Pennsylvania, where Anil Ambani also went. And she was also a scholar in the sense that she was holding an American Friends of LSE scholarship at London School of Economics. So my talk is basically going to be about uh, Indian mathematics. And I'm going to specifically also talk about yoga and Ayurveda. And uh, I'm also going to talk about Vedic mathematics since the 29 sutras. I have my own system now wherein I teach uh, high-speed mathematics. I've dropped Vedic mathematics for my classes. And the reason rationale behind it is like, you know, the sutras were getting me nowhere because kids would uh, get very confused. So I use basically terms from class five textbooks onwards and it's all in plain, simple English. And, um, you know, Veena Ma'am has been uh, sending across these posters. And the last line of the poster says, Asian Indian glory of mathematics by inclining minds towards maths. So this is, you know, the punchline. Of course, Bharat Ki Azadi Ka, Amrit Mahotsa, we've been independent for what, almost 75 years now. We could have, uh, there was no Zoom, there were no computers, there was no internet in 1948. So, you know, maybe we could have done this in 1948, but here we are in 2022 and we have access to technology. We can connect with people. I'll stick to English because I noticed there's a gentleman from Egypt who's joined in. So that would, uh, you know, I would like to kind of stick it, stick to English. 
Now, the first question is why detox yoga and Ayurveda? Uh, the first and foremost thing is that, you know, if you detox your cologne, if you detox your body, if you detox the sigmoid cologne, if you detox the sinuses, the word sinuses, Latin for cavity, uh, the temporal sinuses are over here, the maxillofacial sinuses are over here. And if, I, if you look at the cross-section of my nose, then there's the ethmoid sinus and just behind it is the sphenoid sinus. So, you know, on a daily basis, toxins are being added to the human body. You know, it doesn't matter whether you live in an air-conditioned environment, mucus is being generated, you know, people suffer from rhinitis. I'm told India consumes something like 3 lakh crore rupees worth of, you know, anti-allergic medicines every year. And there are simple yogic uh, detox techniques wherein you know, we can do away with this uh, extremely high spending of three lakh crores of, of medicines. So it improves the clarity of the mind. 20% of the energy which is used by humans is actually used by the brain. The brain is the fattiest organ in the human body. 60% of the human brain is actually fat. And the reason behind it is, you know, it's like a insulating wire. It's like a rubber. So basically, the fat component is so high in our brain is that the neurons which are sending signals for processing, you know, they need to be insulated. So that's the reason why the human brain has so much fat content. And the two critical things which uh, are needed. Uh... Sorry, sir. Because of some disturbance, I had to mute all. Sorry, sir, you can continue. Hello? Sir, you can continue. This thing, oxygen is of prime importance over here. We can't really, I live in New Delhi, I've been living here for the last 34 years, but you know, there's very little that we can do about the quality of the oxygen. But whatever polluted oxygen that we are breathing in the air, we can at least, you know, detox our minds and our bodies. And these are very simple yogic techniques, several hundreds and thousands of years old, very important techniques. Cleansing of sinuses is vital for prana. Prana basically means, you know, the, the breathing process. And in yoga, we have something called pranayam. So there's a very simple detox yoga technique called jalneti. And uh, once we do jalneti, hardly takes about two minutes to three minutes every morning. And we need about one and a half liters of clean drinking water, portable drinking water with salt added to it. And the ratio of the salt should be one is to one, one teaspoonful of salt in one liter of human body uh, temperature or little more than that, you can, you know, uh, warm the water to about 40 degrees Celsius. And the word sinus actually means, uh, it's Latin for cavity. Cleansing of the cologne, uh, if any of you have been following some yoga gurus in India, we have a you know, yoga guru by the name of Sadhguru. He's based out of Coimbatore, the Isha Foundation. And uh, he says that, you know, if you keep the cologne cleanse uh, cleaned up, which is the gastrointestinal tract, starting the stomach is never dirty. The human stomach has a lot of acids and it kind of keeps cleansing itself. And there's a mucosa layer in the, in, the, in the human stomach, which has to be kind of, the acids in the human stomach are so strong, they can actually dissolve a stainless steel, uh, you know, shaving blade. So cleansing of the cologne, I'll move to the next slide. Very famous brand ambassador of yoga in India, Sadhguruji. He says there is only one mental health tip. Keep your cologne clean. And uh, there is something very interesting. A typical Indian home is 1,000 square feet. Uh, we are a tropical country, very dusty. We have, we employ maids. We clean our homes ourselves. The adult skin is 2,000 square feet. Again, we are in a tropical country, dusty country, summer months right now in June, peak summers, some of us take a shower maybe two times, maybe three times. But what about a cologne, the human cologne, that's 4,000 square feet. And uh, if any of you are from a medical background, 
you would realize that the small intestine has very small microscopic projections called villus, that's singular, and villi is the plural. Now, both the small intestine and the large intestine, you know, we don't even, we, we've not even expelled the food that we have consumed after the food gets processed and absorbed by the human body. You know, we, you know, we go in for the second meal or we go in for intermediate meals. And then we mix up foods, you know, sometimes we are wearing, uh, we are eating food, which is not very, uh, you know, the foods are inimical to each other in the sense, as per Ayurveda, we should not be consuming these foods unless they expel from our body. So what happens over a period of time is the small intestine, the villus, the small projections, microscopic projections, they get covered with fetal matter. And all this impacts the human mind, you know, it directly impacts the human mind. So this is coming on Sadhguruji, who's like a very wizened yoga guru. And, you know, I just happened to put this photograph of his on the slides. Um, Vedic maths, very big misnomer. I've gone through Atharva Ved. I've gone, I've consulted some, uh, you know, experts in Sanskrit. There's a international Sanskrit academy, barely three kilometers, four kilometers from my, where I stay in Delhi in Vasant Kunj. And uh, we went through Atharva Ved and we found out that none of the terms used, the 29 sutras, they're tongue twisters. They don't make sense to even we Indians. So, you know, if we have to promote maths on an international basis, it's be best if we stay away from that. So the reason why Vedic maths is a misnomer is, first of all, there's nothing Vedic about the maths which is given in Swamiji's textbook. And uh, secondly, uh, the book is called Vedic Ganit. Now, Ganit is limited to counting. It does not involve algebra. It does not involve calculus. So maths is a much broader term. And uh, I would like to ask people over here, what is the difference between the words maths, Ganit, and arithmetic? I mean, you know, maybe somebody could type chat it or, you know, maybe could somebody could unmute themselves and, uh, you know. Never caught in such a way, sir. Please enlighten us. Okay, thank you for your kind words, Veena Ji. The word maths is actually, if you look out online dictionaries like etimonline.com, the word maths means to learn. The word ganit is Sanskrit, comes from ganana, is to count. And arithmetic is also counting. So ganit and arithmetic are synonymous, but maths basically means to learn. It has nothing to do with counting. So now from the word maths... Sorry to interrupt you. Is there any word uh, which you can say we can translate for maths in Hindi? A single word? Well, the, the right word is ganit because I have not come across any other word. So Ganit, again, is very restrictive. It's, it says counting. So if you're counting from, let's say, minus infinity to positive infinity with all the possible combinations of, you know, irrational, rational numbers. So it's, it's like counting. And maths is like, you know, all encompassing. You have geometry, you have trigonometry, you have algebra. You're not counting in algebra. You're like, you know, you're solving equations. Calculus, differential calculus, integral calculus. It's like, you know, it's a very wide field. Now, coming from the word maths, you get another word called polymath. A polymath is a person who's like a very learned person. He has learned many things. The word poly means many, and the word means learn. And the synonym for polymath is polyhistor. So I'm improving people's vocabulary also over here. The 29 Sanskrit sutras are totally useless. They're not needed. I can hold a special class on, you know, how I teach high-speed mathematics. And just about three days back, I taught one of my college classmates' daughter who was mortified and petrified about, you know, basic computational maths. Like, you know, if you tell her what is 17 times 8 or what is 17 times 13, she was unable to solve it in her head. And over uh, four hours, she's now able to divide 16-digit numbers by, you know, 13-digit numbers and a matter of less than a minute, about 50 seconds of what she was taking. Uh, entire maths can be explained based on just five maths concepts in English. I'm now being encouraged by people to write a book using my system of high-speed mathematics. Hopefully that book should see the light of the day by the end of this year. And I hope to prices 
book at about roughly about three dollars up in or about 215 rupees. Now, what's the issues with maths? Most children they fear maths. They say that you know we can't handle maths. And I've been teaching poor children for free. Uh, I do fleece the rich. Not exactly fleece, but yes, I mean, I take my ounce of flesh, you know, I tell them like, you've got to give me, a, you know, my Guru Dakshana. What is the issue with maths? The first thing I've noticed is that most of the maths books, they're very poorly written. They're very pedantic in nature. Um, I'm not going to specifically mention which book it is, but a leading class 12 book, and it's an Indian publication, there is no mention of the eyelid rule on the chapter on indefinite integration. Now, I stands for the inverse strict functions, L for logarithmic, A for algebraic, T for trigonometric, and E for exponential. If we look at definite integration, that's where the genesis of the eyelid rule actually comes in or the integration by parts comes in. So if we have two functions, function U and function B, and we differentiate it, the answer is du by dx plus uh, sorry, u times dv by dx plus v times du by dx. And then you integrate both sides and you get integration of u dv dx equal to uv minus integral of v du dx. This will not make sense to a lot of people, uh, you know, people in a non-mathematical background. Whenever you teach division, and this is going out for all educators, teach multiplication first. So if you're teaching children 253 divided by 11, First, teach them the rule for multiplying 23 by 11, which equals 253, and then teach them how 253 divided by 11 is equal to 23. Remember that division is repeated subtraction and multiplication is repeated addition. So when, first of all, this eyelid rule is not mentioned in that textbook, they also do not mention the genesis of the integration by parts. Where has it come from? It's come from differentiation of the product of two function rules. Poor aesthetic quality of books. I do understand India is like a poor country. And, uh, but, you know, the government could do a lot better by having, you know, good quality books. One of the best books I've read in my life is Richard Levin's book called Statistics for Management, which is also used at the IAM Ahmedabad. My brother went to IAM Ahmedabad, 85 to 87 batch. He was uh, you know, classmate of Raghuram Rajan, who went on to become the governor of Reserve Bank of India. They're very important. And today, in today's digital age, why should we have YouTube contributors teaching out of these textbooks, saying that, okay, we're going to solve chapter 11 for Mardi Sharma? The government should take the initiative. The same textbook should be in a digital format on YouTube, accessible. Hey, it is already there. Vishal, Sorry? Vishal, sir. Oh. NCRT has developed these video lessons. Okay. They're available on Diksha portal. Okay. And I have been one of the contributors. So. Oh, okay. Great. Great to hear that. Great to hear that. So uh, now uh, the next thing is just one second. Uh, we have a very wrong education policy in India. CBSC does not even talk about logarithms in classes 9 and 10. Very strange. And all of a sudden, what happens in class 11 is children are taught how to differentiate the ln function, which is log of a function to the base e. Uh, children, you know, they don't even know that log of x divided by y is equal to log x minus y. Simple, basic stuff. And there are certain entrance exams like the National Defense Academy exam. They test a lot on switch of base concepts. And these questions are something which, you know, if the log concepts are very deeply ingrained, a child can actually you know, score full marks on the law questions. Uh, even ICSE logarithms, they lack conceptual clarity and depth. I'm very surprised that logarithms is, you know, is the uh, genesis of the slide rule was all based on log. Earthquakes are all based on a log scale. So if you have a law earthquake of uh, eight on the Richter scale, that earthquake is 10 times that of the severity of an earthquake on uh, level seven on the Richter scale, not taught, no connection between reality and practical stuff. Poor explanation of the formula for E is the second most used maths constant after pi. Euler even brought out a relationship between E, pi and iota. There is a relationship between E, pi and iota. 
and iota as you know is the under root of minus one this is the first uh, form of e and this comes from the world of finance jacob bernoulli discovered that you know if you do compounding and this is the formula for compounding of uh, you know interest rates and if you have uh, let's say dollar one in your bank account and the bank gives you 100% rate of interest eventually you know your money will not grow into an infinitesimal sum it will terminate at e which is 2.781828 not taught very poorly explained this is the factorial form of e summation of 1 divided by x factorial starting at 0 and culminating at infinity the connect between the two is not explained in textbooks nobody teaches math symbology how many of us know that the multiplication symbol, which is a cross like this, there's a word in English for that. It's called a saltire. And the division sign in maths, the maths that we use in school and the exams, and in the books is actually called an obelus. But on the computer, you don't have that. You have a forward slash. So the forward slash is actually called a vergule or a solidus. If you were to make maths more flavorful, you should go back into the history of mathematics. Lack of practical applied mathematics. I mean, I've seen exercises when chords, when circles are taught, but you know, the practical application of mathematics is virtually non-existent. I have a small question on integral calculus. So if I integrate something and I get the answer as ln of within brackets, x square within the mod signs plus the constant of integration c, or on the right side, I get ln, of within round brackets, no mod sign over here, x squared plus c. I would just like to ask people which of these is correct. If I were an examiner and one of uh, the student wrote one of these, which was wrong, I would possibly deduct about 0.25 marks for this. Anybody, have you ever thought one of these is wrong? Which one is wrong? Anybody, I'm giving you time. Think about it. Uh, Prolay Mandal MLZ says the left one is wrong. Okay, he's right. Why is it wrong? Uh, why is it wrong, uh, Mr. Mandal? Why? Why is it wrong? You're right. I mean, your answer is correct. Okay, uh, I'm, I don't see, square is always positive, correct, correct. So uh, he got it right, and uh, let me go back to chat, bracket and mode sign together, okay, he's right. Now, if you look at this first function, if you square even a negative number, it will turn out to be positive. So the two modulus brackets are redundant. All you need to do is just write ln of, x square within round brackets plus the constant of integration over there. Excellent, good. So we move forward, uh, this is just this thing. How many of you have, what is this? I mean, people can, you know, speak it out in chat. If somebody can, you know, like tell me, what is this? What is this symbol for? Yes, participants, anyone? Okay, Meena Anand is saying infinity, correct. Have you ever uh, wondered in finite, okay, Prolay Mandal is also saying that, is there a word for this in the English language or in the vocabulary of mathematics? It's called a Lemnis gate. You know, we are taught maths in a very, very pedantic fashion. You do question exercise 8.1, let's do question number one. Uh, Gita, I would not agree too much with you that it cannot be determined. It's infinity and the right English vocabulary word for this is Leibniz gate. What is this? A with two dots on top. What are the, what is the name for those two dots? Which language does it come from? And where in the world of mathematics is A with a double bar used? I come from the world of finance, so I've used it. So, you know, and I will uh, kind of encourage all people who are over here to move into the world of actuarial mathematics. 
this is an annuity due. Once again, CBSE in class 9 and class 10 does not teach annuities. ICSE teaches annuities, and it's an annuity due which is paid at the beginning of the year. And the two dots, they come from the German language. It's an umlaut, U-M-L-A-U-T. Proloi Mandel, it is not derivative double order. I'm sorry. I've done a lot of research on this. And the two dots actually mean an umlaut. So A actually, you know, it's a deepening. A, we all know, is a vowel, both in English and also in German. So it deepens the sound. But in the world of mathematics, this is used in actuarial mathematics to denote an annuity where the money is paid at the beginning of the year. What is this? I just spoke about it. It's an obelus. The plural is obuli. Calculus, calculi, bacillus, bacilli, apicus, apicai. What is the difference between capital sigma and the integral sign? Fundamental difference. Now I'm talking at you know the level of an atom. In fact, I've, I'm spitting up the atom now. I'm talking about protons, neutrons, electrons. Have you ever wondered what is the fundamental difference between capital sigma and the integration symbol? And by the way, this integration symbol was brought in by Leibniz, Gottfried Leibniz, who was a German mathematician. Okay, I will not uh, waste your time. Just one second. The capital sigma represents discrete additions. So if you're adding one plus two plus three, you use capital sigma. Whereas the integral symbol, the entire basis of calculus is the concept of continuity. So if you have a curve like this, going like this, you split it into small, small differentiated rectangles or trapeziums, and you all add them together. That is what the, uh, the, uh, uh, the integration symbol actually represents. What is pi? What is pi over here? I mean, I know this is the symbol for pi, and there's a very interesting, yeah, uh, Proloi Pro Mandel is correct, summation, we add all the number discrete additions, but you have to remember one thing, uh, Proloi, that in capital sigma, you have discrete numbers being added. The integration symbol is actually the Latin longest, which stands for some summa or summation. So that's like a continuous thing. This is the symbol for pi, and you will not believe this, Archimedes, Archimedes, Madhva, a lot of people worked on pi. There was no such word as pi. Arca, I mean, Archimedes was Greek, Madhva was not Greek. And the word, the symbol for pi, this is lowercase pi. This is not uppercase pi. The uppercase pi, pi symbolizes product of numbers. So basically, when we are talking about pi, it comes from the Greek letter P for periphery. And another name for circle is a perigon. Gon means angle and peri means something which goes around like perimeter, et cetera. And that is precisely what a circle is. What are these two symbols? Everybody knows, I mean, you know, even children know what these symbols stand for. Pi is irrational, mean energy, you're right. E is also irrational. Have you ever, first of all, you know, people can tell me in chat, what does these two symbols stand for? They're like maybe class four, class five, man. Greater than, less than sign, correct. But has anybody ever wondered that what, is there a name, is there a vocabulary? This is for, it's called, we English speakers would read it as guillemets, but it's a French word and it's pronounced as guimos. And in the French language, you don't have double quotes for quotation. So if you say that Vina ma'am said, no double quotes in French language, they would put these gimos and it would say, you know, Vishal Bhatia is conducting a class. So it comes from the French language. Uh, this I will just go through very quickly. In the world of mathematics, in the world of geometry, in a right angle triangle, we are taught in school, you know, opposite size, adjacent, perpendicular base. But the names for the two opposite sides to the hypotenuse, hypotenuse we know is the longest side in a right angle triangle. The word is cathetus. And as I said it in abacus and bacillus and all those words that I was using, obulus and obuli, the plural is cathetai. And cathetus is 
Greek for legs. And that is precisely what, you know, in a right angle triangle we have. An amplicon angle is actually an obtuse angle. An oxygon angles are three acute angles. How many of you, while studying chemistry, ever wondered where the word oxygen came from? Oxy stands for sharp, caustic, pointed, and gone means, uh, gen means generate. So oxygen, before it was discovered by the French chemist Lavoisier, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce his name correctly. So it was thought that, you know, there is a gas which uh, is the base, fundamental base for a lot of acids. Letter Z stands for the set of integers. Any of you have ever wondered why the letter Z, Z for the set of integers? Why not the letter I? The letter I stands for the set of imaginary numbers. The word Zalain, and notice these, you know, umlauts are coming in again. The A sound is being deepened. Zalain is actually German for counting. And the letter A with the two dots on top, A with an umlaut. Om means about, and laut is German for sound. One plus two plus three, what are they collectively known as? They are collectively known as adents. But one, because it's the first number which is being added to all the preceding numbers, it's called an augent. Vinculums, before brackets, before board mass, all these rules came into the world of maths. The fraction bar, the radix sign, repeating decimals, that particular word is a Latin word called vinculum, which means to tie or to bind. So if you have a numerator two and on the bottom you have a denominator, Indian mathematical texts, where all they have found the palm manuscripts, there was no usage of vinculum. So they were, the numbers were floating. One divided by two, the horizontal bar was floating in Indian mathematical text. So it's a contribution of the Western world, vinculums. And uh, in Vedic maths, which I have stopped using, it, it denotes negative numbers. An orthogonal angle is a right angle, uh, you know, in which you get a perpendicular angle. The word ortho means right, correct. Orthography is correct handwriting. Cacography is poor or bad handwriting. And calligraphy is good handwriting. This symbol obviously comes from the world of actuaries. And since I come from the world of finance, is the actuarial angle or rabbit's hatch. Now, I'm not going to name this uh, actuarial professor who makes a few crores every year teaching actuarial subjects in North Campus and Delhi University. I met him once and I asked him, sir, like, what, are, what is the name for this particular symbol after the end? He very confidently told me that it's a rabbit's, it's called a rabbit's hatch. The reality is I've read textbooks, American textbooks on actuaries, and it was mentioned over there. There was no mention of rabbit's hatch. I Googled for it. And rabbit's hatch is basically a pigeon, you know, uh, sorry, not a pigeon, a kind of a cage in which you put a rabbit. That's a rabbit's hatch. It's the actual angle. Uh, my conclusion, let's collectively as mathematicians, you know, tell, uh, you know, the government to, you know, tell them to spend more money on primary education. I'm not bothered about secondary and tertiary education. Primary education with a deep focus on high-speed Indian mathematics, Western symbology, and in classes eight, Pan-India, in all the several 29 identified languages by the, uh, recognized by the government of India, we should have a six monthly examination conducted on detox yoga and detox Ayurveda. We can knock off the three lakh crore bill. The government can easily knock off. Why are we paying the big pharma companies for running knows why are we using Vicks inhaler, which is nothing but actually a chemical. And I would encourage all of you to actually visit a pharmaceutical factory and also a milk factory. You people will never ever consume milk all your life. You'll go vegan and you'll never ever consume any of these allopathic medicines. They stink, honestly speaking. Okay. Uh, spend more money. Daily government is spending 24%. So does Singapore. This is primary education, kindergarten to class five. And I would also encourage all of you people to read a book called Kindergarten is Too Late. It's written by a Japanese author called Mitsuo Ibaka, who was the co-founder of Sony Corporation. He said the maximum learning takes place at the age of nine months after birth till two years. And typically children enter kindergarten at age five, six, maybe the bright ones enter at age four. 
Digitize all maths content, make it into a mandatory pre-embedded app on all cell phones sold in India. If your cell phone, it could be Samsung, it could be Vivo, it could be OnePlus, it could be Apple. If your cell phone does not have basic detox, yoga, Ayurved, and you know, Vedic maths, stroke, high-speed maths, the cell phone will not be eligible for sale in India. Tablets, Windows, and Mac operating software laptops sold in India. That is the only and the only way that we can actually bring about a maths revolution in our country. Make kids learn about yogic detox kriyas and Ayurveda herbs. Shank Pushpi is an amazing herb. Brahmi is an amazing herb. Then we have Ashwagandha, Sarvaganda. Kids should actually plant these plants in their homes. You can even plant them in, you know, you may not be able to use them or process them, but at least identification of these herbs. 24 by 7 central government subsidized fully residential math stroke computing lab span India. Modular in nature. You want to want to learn about matrix algebra? You can go to room number 101, matrix algebra. A professor would be teaching matrix algebra, or you can watch a video over there. Again, digitized content, fully residential. Children come, they immerse themselves, they get marinated into the world of mathematics. Finally, get actuarial processes into India. If you Google for Elon Musk and actuaries, now we all know that Elon Musk is the richest person on this earth, the founder of Tesla, Motocop. Actuarial processes, believe me, you know, we could actually beat the entire infotech industry operating out of Bangalore. There's so much money to be made so many processes which can come into India and Indians have a natural proclivity towards mathematics and we can actually, you know, whatever money we are getting, the government can actually tax the corporations which are operating or the call centers, KPOs operating in the domain of actuaries, tax them and, you know, plunge that money into primary education. So that was about me. Uh, any of you are interested in, uh, uh, you know, staying in touch with me, uh, you know, my Cell number is plus nine one, which is the country code for India. And uh, write it know. in chat, sir. Sorry. You can write okay. the number in chat. Okay, write it in chat. Okay, I'll, I'll, do I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. So I take forward any questions. Uh, I'm more of a quiet kind of a person, and I would prefer if people, you know, type chat it. I could answer the queries rather than do me by many people speaking at the same time. So, you know, I'm open to all questions from you people. It was indeed a very enlightening uh, session. Thank and uh, we today observed a totally different aspect of mathematics. The point right. of view which we never uh, thought of. In right. Fact. So, uh, it's really eye-opener. Right. We need to look back and uh, go through history and... Uh, the things uh, the in the last slide, the suggestions which you gave to improve mathematics teaching or studying or learning uh, in India are excellent. Right. Uh, I I wish somebody from the authorities is watching this video or um, someday they will go through our FB page. Right. And improvements. Uh, might be I would say that you send a recording at, uh, to the education secretary in Delhi and also the Minister of Education. So you can tell them that I can, or we collectively as a group, we can spearhead rewriting of the textbooks, rewriting of the digitized content, get away from pedantic teaching. I mean, you know, the kids should know why you cannot calculate anti-log of a number with a negative mantis. And that's where the uh, Vedic maths shoots in, bring, comes in. You add a plus one and you add a minus one. Now the minus one, the minus the middle hyphen is not to the left of one. It is goes to the top, which is a Winklum one. And that Winklum one gets added to the negative characteristic if it exists. And the plus one point followed by four zeros gets the, the negative mantissa gets subtracted from that. Again, Vedic maths kicks in because you're subtracting from a base number 1.0000. And then, you know, the last uh, digit of the negative mantissa gets subtracted by 10 and rest uh, gets subtracted from 9. So we have to merge Indian Desi mathematics 
with you know complementary western mathematics we indians did not invent logarithms you know we may be very sharp very brainy people in the world of math uh, madhav is asking the herbs that you taught are helpful in retention can they be suggested to be taken yes there are uh, very safe herbs uh, the most prominent ayurvedic herb which enhances cognition or memory functions is uh, sorry shankushpi then followed by shankushpi it's brahmi and then you have uh, herbs like ashwagandha sarpagandha and uh, i'll be happy to bring on board uh, uh, you know an ayurvedic doctor who's a gold medalist from banaras hindu university i'm not a man of uh, medicine i got cured i had a 27 year old ailment i took one um, you know dose of an ayurvedic medicine and the rex next morning you know i was cured i had sleep apnea and i had hyperacidity and the medicine which actually cured i'm very anti alcohol actually i don't consume alcohol was actually a medicine which had almost 36% volume by volume alcohol and it's called draksha sir even uh, i am um, very yeah. much in favor of ayurvedic and homeopathic medicines great and uh, i also endorse uh, both the medicine which you suggested right uh, shankushpi is really good uh, correct and it's pleasant tasting the one from vedanath is it's got a beautiful deep green color bottle green color and it's very pleasant tasting it's very sweet so kids will not have any problem consuming uh, you know uh, uh, meanwhile uh, is there uh, i will ask participants is there any question you know, please put up in the chat and uh, meanwhile i would like to introduce our uh, chairman founder chairman of our organization raman science and technology foundation that is dr chandramouli joshi sir sir right. are you there dr joshi are you there joshi sir uh he was here in the big yes he is here joshi sir uh meanwhile we can take the views of dr manoj jawani uh, who is a director of apj abdul kalam council of young scientists from gujarat state he is a state director of organization uh manoj sir manoj sir please unmute yourself and say something about today's webinar uh this was the slide uh, vishal sir uh, it was meant to be shared in the beginning but due to oh, sure. since you were sharing the screen we could not do it at that oh, time sure. oh, sure. so as they say better late than never yes so never never came in but uh, you know we were late that's okay better late than never it was a short uh, introduction of you right thank you like paramjit sir prepared thank you paramjit sir so any question i think uh, somebody is asking if i can unmute uh, okay manoj sir uh, needs um, sir mai abhi aapko unmute karti hu just a minute Meanwhile, okay. Let me name of herbs, please. Proloi mandal. Ah, uh, proloi. It's Shankushpi, Brahmi, Sarpagandha, Ashwagand. Anything which has a impact on the brain neurons. They are all plant based. They are not chemicals based. I have not said uh, talked about shilaji or you know any uh, basm. Ah, uh, they are. They could be unsafe. They could impact the kidney. but these are all plant based and the roots and you know the stems are used i really do not know the processing process for these herbs easily available on amazon.in for those of us in india the egyptian gentleman if uh, amazon.com us sends across these herbs uh, personally i endorse bedanath because my personal experience with ayurveda has been excellent uh dr manoj jawani is saying thank you sir many i hope no ideas i appreciate your kind words sir a so name of host yeah would you like to say something i have unmuted you 
hello can you hear me yes uh, dr sahil he is my front door neighbor so <laughs> uh, even though uh, we are neighbors i enjoyed this talk very much and i suggest that um, more of such talks should be held at uh, regular frequency so that a large section of the students community can learn a lot from yeah, such talks you, and i would also like to append to what dr sahil said thank you for your kind words sir his daughter is an expert uh, yoga charni and about 3 years back in the month of october i taught her how to cleanse the cologne and she has never looked back and uh, she did pay me and i am sure she made a lot of money after learning it <laughs> so she is an excellent yoga charni any of you over here uh, her name is uh, chavi sahel i think she goes by that name on instagram and facebook so you can connect with her extremely fit extremely dedicated yoga charni and dr sahel is a celebrated malarial scientist uh, he's just super animated and uh, he you can count him as amongst the who's who in the world community of scientists as far as you know malaria goes it is our pleasure to uh, to have you here sir thank you thank very you. much for joining and uh, sir your teacher was also there uh, is she there gori rakshit ma'am i did see her name i need to has she left uh, or she is i am not sure uh, gori ma'am no i don't know gori ma'am are you there could you raise your hand or at least say hello on chat uh, she is i think left i think she is left viral sir she is a busy woman uh, viral sir i'm getting a question which says where can we get to know the yoga for detoxing cologne uh one thing i must correct you over here is it's not yoga it's yog and the word yog basically means to connect with the parmata parmatma which is god and we are jeevatmas we are mere you know mortals we are not immortals so the there are six body cleansing kriyas basti dhauti navli neti kapal bhati is not a pranayam it comes under one of the six shatkam kriyas and tradak kriya tradak is an excellent kriya if you want to get rid of your spectacles and calm your mind before you go to bed so the kriya for detoxing the cologne is called varisar dhauti in ordinary parlance it's called lagu shank prakshalan since we have an egyptian gentleman lagu means short shank is conch and prakshalan means to cleanse in short it's also called lsp the bihar school of yoga yoga and munge has brought out a shorter version of lsp it's called the ttk kriya t stands for tadasan second t stands for teryak tadasan k stands for kati chakrasan the first three asans which you have to do in lsp so mark the words ttk kriya lsp kriya there are tons and tons of uh you know youtube videos which you can watch but again a forewarning never ever do it unsupervised you could end up actually messing up your body if you do it unsupervised i personally know of yog gurus in new york city indian yog gurus in new york city who were not using himalayan pink rock salt but were using the iodized sea salt and they ended up with very high blood pressure yes सर विशाल सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल ओके चंद्रमौली सर परमजीत सर आई थिंक सर वाज देयर टू फॉर्मली से वोट ऑफ थैंक्स टू यू बट ही इज नॉट एबल टू जॉइन मी because of network issues uh, now i request paramjit sir to formally thank vishal sir uh, 
ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन the minds of our students and to uh, get rid of the phobia of mathematics we should recreate the better world we should rewrite the books we should think over this idea given by our worthy dr vishal bhatia ji an expert and having the knowledge of many spheres of life changing subjects so once again i thank you very much sir this is a great opportunity for all of us and definitely we would like to create some program uh, which which implements your ideas at least we can run a pilot project i would like to suggest to vina ma'am also this is my suggestion that we should start some pilot project to implement the ideas of our dr vishal bhatia thank you very much thank you sir uh, thank you for your kind words uh, sir and uh, see as a pilot project what i could do is uh, i i'll do a 3 hour session which will cover the four mm -hmm. basic maths operators uh, addition subtraction multiplication division and children will be extremely numerate and uh, typically class 7 onwards children and you know but it has to be on a bulk basis and on a paid basis i really uh, meenan and ma'am is saying thanks okay you're welcome ma'am so uh, i can do that i can help with rewriting the textbooks uh, you know we need to rewrite the textbooks i'll give you another very quick example and before i end is rd sharma chapter number 19 205 pages long some of our you know class 5 class 6 ncrd textbooks are not even 205 pages long there's a chapter on indefinite integration integration of dx divided by a sin x plus b cos x where when you take a u substitution you put u equal to tan x by 2 there is no mention of the fact that this particular u substitution is the smartest ever indefinite integration substitution and it was done by a german mathematician by the name of weierstrass i mean how much print ink does it cost to mention this and say that this is the smartest indefinite integral calculus u substitution and i'm using the term u over here is because uh, i read a lot of american textbooks where they use the letter u otherwise you can you know like use the letter y letter z etc etc they really need to rewrite the textbooks that's where the problem lies it's not the teachers it's not the school environment the problem lies because of textbooks they generate maths phobia they don't generate maths filly in students 3 hours session children will be i mean before they can even punch, their parents can punch in the numerals on a calculator they will be dishing out the answers so i'm ready to do that pan india you know globally whatever and it's all in plain simple english there is no there is not a word of sanskrit you know we had that um, you know egyptian gentleman and uh, you know i mean you know <laughs> he's egyptian he knows arabic but you know unfortunately he can't even identify differentiate between the letter k and the letter kh so we need to and english is the language of commerce english is the language of aviation you know you could be a russian pilot but if you don't know english you not eligible to fly planes sir uh, one uh, one idea is also coming to my mind hmm. that uh, you know uh, uh, there is a problem in teaching not only mathematics but teaching hmm. other subjects also but uh, but my point is here that uh, we are missing training how to train the mind of uh, students or people 
this thing is very much missing in our education system we are not training the minds of our we are not giving any training about the senses how to how to use the senses our physical senses so this this all is missing and you i think you are the master of this thing because uh, you you deal with uh, ayurveda and yoga also so we should uh, start a pilot uh, project not just on focusing on mathematics we have to integrate something like that that how to train their mind so and uh, train their uh, senses so this uh, this idea I, i have in my mind so uh, i don't know whether this is uh, possible or not but this is the idea i would like to uh, i second everything every word which you said just now <coughs> let's have a uh, pilot wherein on a on a holiday school holiday or in some government school or maybe in some leading private school in chandigarh or in delhi on a paid basis we bring in one boy and one girl yeah, yeah. and uh, we i i'll I, i have a very deep understanding about lagushan prachalan kriya we make them go through the process we video record it put it up on youtube and we share it with the education secretary and the government of india and then we the education minister and then we tell them that look these were kids uh we did this to them we gave them ayurvedic herbs we taught them vedic maths uh, i am against the term vedic maths it's high speed maths kahan se laaye doesn't matter it's my product so we train them and we tell kids okay now now let's test pit these kids against kids from saint columbus kids from goon school dehradun i mean i, I can bet even the doon school maths teacher would not be knowing 999 multiplied by 657 or for that matter 2543 divided by 111 or 2543 divided by 11 and these government school kids relatively impoverished compared to doon school kids i don't want to demean or hurt anyone's feelings but you know these kids would be far better than doon school kids and we can we can we can have a and why don't we have a quiz show i mean a mathematical quiz show on television like the bormita quiz contest and those kind of things like the spelling bee and by the way uh, a girl called harini just won the script spelling bee contest in the united states that is something which is absolutely you know indian kids is domain i mean nobody can even come close to them neither the chinese neither the white americans nor the black americans not even the english can come close to what indian kids are doing yeah, in the us definitely, definitely. so we should we should build up then we also have the geography b over there national geographic conducts it in the us that's not as popular as the script spelling b but we need to uh, do something on those lines and have a basically you know the show like kbc or something like that you know we should have it on the internet or oh, sorry on on national television actually okay okay great sir once again no I, ideas great ideas and uh, really uh, you have tossed the uh, a coin now in air so definitely we, we will catch it and our organization will work on it Done. to launch, launch some uh, pilot project integrating some uh, these things also uh, how to detoxify the brain Correct. and my uh, brain mind and chit because uh, i have 30 years experience sir and totally i think uh, this is missing in our education system how to detoxify the brain how to de- detoxify your mind Uh, so so this is uh, throughout missing um, i can say that um, uh, i have tried many times to implement but there is no environment in the system to implement such things and there is no scope for implementing innovative ideas in our education system so we 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 have to bring the change and right. definitely sir idea your ideas are great and um, your experience is great and uh, this is an eye opening session for all of us Once again, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. You are welcome, Parib ji ji, and all my <laughs> thanks to Veena, ma'am. We've been uh, WhatsApp. We've been we occasionally WhatsApp each other once in six months, but now it's you know it's become more regular, and I've gotten to know her also. So she approached me. I mean, had it not been uh, for me connecting with Veena, ma'am, through one of the you know WhatsApp groups, maybe you know this, I would not have been here today. It is, it is my pleasure, sir. Uh, and sir, Param ji, sir, I must appreciate my back. i must uh, uh, pat on my back uh, to invite you as a uh, <laughs> you can say uh, thank you ma'am 
and to welcome you, sir because mm-hmm. both of uh, uh, you gel so well uh, yeah. the you, ideas of both of you so you are the very right person to welcome yeah. vishal sir ma'am I, I, i am i can i can see ma'am i can see the new side from here but i don't know how uh, how can i uh, implement i don't have any idea but i can see if this ideas are if we implement these ideas in our education system or uh, taking some pilot project so definitely within 3 4 years there will be a remarkable change in the education system so uh, i i can imagine but i don't know how can i implement the seed, that seed has been sown yeah uh, we have to water it <laughs> yes sir we we will learn from our dr vishal bhatia sir and expert and our mentor this is a great idea thank you param deep singh thank you thank you much good evening sir good evening sir is there thank you sir for joining thank you bhatia ji a very interesting and effective and motivation speech lecture thank you we are for all all institute and thank you param deep singh and to vina ji to sir i i would suggest this uh, series this uh, series should not very end here sir <laughs> very interesting uh, speech and lecture very nice congratulations sir and thank you so with this we mm-hmm. shall we end the session today yes uh, we can do that just thank you uh, thank you once again all the participants and yeah. wish you all good night okay thank you ma'am thank you